Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias with Mike. Okay, um, WrestleMania 28. Finally, you guys, it's been a long time. It's been since WrestleMania 18. We have a WrestleMania that doesn't have either John Cena or Triple H in a title match. You'd think that'd be exciting. And then you watch this WrestleMania. Oh, man, this WrestleMania is built on a foundation of lies. Okay. <laughs> um, not the greatest. Gonna say it right out front. There's one real, eh, two, two real big high spots. Not the greatest WrestleMania. Uh, all right. Well, let's start, as, as I always do. We're in Miami. We're in the hometown of The Rock. Um, naturally, he's going to play an important factor in tonight's proceedings. But um, we start off, as always, with a dark match. And this is actually on a WWE pre-show. This is not on Sunday Night Heat. It's on a pre-show. I presume it was on YouTube at that point. But, uh, yeah, we got a pre-show, guys. And it's not a battle royal. How else are they going to put everyone on the show? Oh, don't worry. There's a 12-man tag. Yeah, it's as good as it sounds. Um, the pre-show match, though, we had a triple threat match for the Tag Team Championships. Primo and Epico with Rosa Mendez. Uh, they were the champs, and they defended against Justin Gabriel and Tyson Kidd and the Usos. Uh, didn't get to see a match. They didn't show anything about on the main show. But I presume it was pretty good. It sounds fun. I mean, I completely forgot Justin Gabriel and Tyson Kidd were a tag team. But damn, I'd like to see some more of that at some point. Um. Okay, so let's get into this show. Uh, this show is built on a couple of really big lies. The first lie happens right away. Now, if you'll remember, the year before this, um, the pre the dark match was a U.S. championship match between Sheamus and Daniel Bryan that ended, you know, in a kerfuffle, and it turned into a battle royal. So they never really got to have their match. Well, this match is for the World Heavyweight Championship. Normally, that's fine. You know, kick, kick the show off with something hot. We'll accept that. Daniel Bryan is the champion. He comes out with uh, his girlfriend, AJ Lee. And we're going to get Sheamus. If you know your Daniel Bryan history, you know exactly what this is. AJ kisses Dan Bryan good luck. Bryan turns around right into a bro kick. 18 seconds later, Sheamus is the new world champion. I wonder if we're going to have something similar to that at WrestleMania this year. Brock, Goldberg, shit bear lasts long there, longer than two minutes. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's hot garbage. It's hot garbage. Um, it brings the show off to a nice stop. Uh, the crowd chants Daniel Bryan for most of the rest of the show because why wouldn't they? Because that's a lot of bullshit. It's a lot of bullshit. And uh, wait till you see what they use that time for. Oh, you ain't going to like it. Because uh, I didn't like it. Not one bit. Uh, the next match we have is Kane going up against Randy Orton. This is every Kane versus Randy Orton match you've ever seen in your life. It's not really that special. Like, I thought maybe after this, oh, okay, maybe they'll throw in something... You know, like a little bit high spotty, like a little bit more exciting. Like I, I actually wouldn't mind seeing that triple threat tag team match now. Nope, Kane versus Randy Orton, kind of slow, kind of plotting. Kane wins. Yep, it's basically it. Honestly, I don't remember a single spot from the match. Don't remember a single thing. Um, this next match actually had really good storyline going into it. Too bad the match was really short. It's uh, an Eric Conno title match. The champion, Cody Rhodes, going up against the Big Show. And the whole story for this is Cody is pointing out Big Show's never really had a big WrestleMania moment. And if you go back through through me talking about him, he hasn't. Uh, he's had a couple of embarrassing ones, like losing a lot. Uh, they, they 
like they showed basically a highlight reel of Big Show's WrestleMania antics with like um, funny pratfall music underneath it. It's actually kind of amusing, but um, but Big Show kind of puts his demons to rest of this, and he beats Cody Rhodes in about five minutes and becomes the new IC champion. If I remember correctly, Cody beats him back by putting Big Show's leg through a table in a tables match at Extreme Rules. But still, you know, kind of, kind of a, it was an okay match. It was fine, I guess. There wasn't really too much to speak of. Um, so now we get into uh, this uh, tag team match, Divas tag team match. Beth Phoenix and Eve Torres, totally forgot Eve was a heel at one point, against Kelly Kelly and Maria Menounos. Yeah, Maria Menounos. You might know her from uh, various entertainment programs on NBC, I think. I actually don't remember what show she hosts. The only reason, the only way I knew Maria Menounos is she was in the first Fantastic Four movie. She was the nurse that Johnny Storm hit on. Yeah, go figure. You don't remember that? Go watch it again. That's definitely Maria Menounos. But um, anyway... This match lasts longer than the Eric Conneltaya match and the World Championship match combined. Yeah. Uh, th- this, guys, this WrestleMania is. Ooh, it's rough. It's really, really rough. Um, it depends on who you like. Me, personally, this, this did not appeal to my sensibilities, this whole WrestleMania. Uh, but Kelly Kelly and Maria Menounos got the win. It was fine. Maria Maria was serviceable as a celebrity wrestler. Like like if you if you've watched anything WWE's done with Maria Menounos, you know she's a fan. I I'll say that first and foremost. So I don't want to rag on her. Um, during one of the Hall of Fame pre shows on the network, I want to say it was before WrestleMania 30. Maria Menounos was interviewing Dusty Rhodes, and she did the entire hard time speech to Dusty Rhodes while impersonating Dusty Rhodes. It's mind blowing. It's so, so good. I give all the credit in the world to Maria Menounos. She's a huge fan, and damn it, she put forth her best effort. She really did. I give her all the credit in the world. Not my cup of tea, but. You know, she was fine. I She runs the boobs better than Kelly Kelly. I'll put it that way. Uh, <laughs> but, um, so moving on, we have one of the, and actually, it's kind of funny. I was, um, I was grabbing a drink, finishing, uh, this pay-per-view, and I grabbed this cut strictly by accident, I swear. It's a WrestleMania 28 cup. See? So this is the match we're going to talk about next, the Hell in a Cell. Taker, Triple H, with creepy Shawn Michaels as the referee. Yeah. Get that out of your brains. Can't do it. Um, sorry. It's just, a. it's not a good look for Shawn. It's not a good look. Um, but yeah, Taker, Triple H, guess who wins? This match is over a half hour. Now, this is the second lie that this WrestleMania is built on. It's the second lie. Because here's the thing. They called it the end of an era. Okay? And if this was the last time we would see Undertaker, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, or Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania, I'd be all in. This would be great. However, Undertaker wrestles next year. Triple H wrestles next year. I'm pretty sure Shawn Michaels interferes in that match. And Hell in a Cell also comes back couple of years later. So it's not the end of an era. It's I don't know what it is. It's a good match. Do not get me wrong, but the pathos of it it's really insistent on itself. They're re- like you don't have to try this hard to tell a story. You don't have to. They, they already got two swings at this with Triple H and Undertaker. This is the third time. And it's... Once you do the third time of the guy looking at someone saying, end the match, like, just just finish me because I know I can't do it, it gets to be old. It gets to be old. 
Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels, it worked because Ric Flair never wrestled in WWE again. Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, it worked because Shawn Michaels still has not wrestled. This time, doesn't fucking work. Not even close. Not even a little bit. Not even at all. I will say the part of all three of them walking out together, very cool moment. Would have been even cooler moment if we never saw them again. Just saying. Taker, 20 was a nice round number. That's where you probably should have left it. Then we wouldn't be in this predicament we're in. Um, But yeah, I mean, it, if you've never seen the match before, it's definitely worth a watch because there's a lot of great near falls and everything like that. But again, it, it's it's too insistent on itself for me personally. Now, the next match, oh boy, a 12-man tag team match. Um, the two general managers of Raw and SmackDown, they form teams of six, and this match will determine who will be the manager, the general manager of both Raw and SmackDown. You have Team John Laurinaitis, uh, it consists of David Otunga, Mark Henry, Dolph Ziggler, Jack Swagger, The Miz, and Drew McIntyre, with Vicky Guerrero and Brie Bella ringside. I told you we'd get all these jobbers in. And uh, they're going up against Teddy Long's team of Santino Morella, Kofi Kingston, R-Truth, Zack Ryder, The Great Kali, and Booker T with Hornswoggle, Eve Torres, Nikki Bella, and Oksana ringside. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of fucking people in the match. Um, I mean, it, you have more former world champions on Team Johnny's team, so Team Johnny wins. Because Kofi Kingston's not really a thing yet. R-Truth was never a thing. Santino was winding down. And Zack Ryder gets kicked in the balls by Eve. Yeah, that's really the memory of this match, is Zack Ryder gets kicked in the balls by Eve. And it is nice to see The Miz get the win, even though this guy was beating John Cena the previous year. <laughs> Come on, we can do something better with The Miz. We could have put him versus Daniel Bryan. That would have been great be great now never mind um all right so the next match the next match i think is the real high spot for this wrestlemania uh far and away it's the wwe title match cm punk the champion going in against chris jericho really really good match a lot of fun uh the storyline going into this was that Jericho was, you know, making fun of Punk's family, saying his dad was an alcoholic, his mom was a pill axe, his sister was a pill axe, stuff like that. And if Punk got DQ'd, he would have lost the championship. Really, really good. Although I don't like the stipulation if you get disqualified, you lose the title. I never liked that at WrestleMania, especially because Taker and Triple H was so violent, like so incredibly violent that this couldn't be. And I mean, you know, they try and sell it. They try and work with it. But I, that that's the only part of the match that really falls flat. But otherwise, it's really good. And uh, CM Punk actually gets the win via the Anaconda device, which is nice because usually he, you know, he hits to go to sleep, and then that's basically all she wrote. Uh, but now, now see, this is when I was like, okay, Maybe this last match can save this WrestleMania for me. Because I didn't remember how the first one was of Rock and John Cena. But guess what? We had some time to kill, apparently. Because there were two concerts before Rock and John Cena. Yeah, there's a lot of music at this WrestleMania. Um, It doesn't work. The crowd was starting to get back into it, thanks to Taker Triple H. The team Johnny, you know, was a cooldown match. But Punk and Jericho, people were getting into it. And then they just killed the crowd completely. They just killed the crowd and Cena and Rock had to warm them back up. But, uh, two, like, Flo Rida, Machine Gun Kelly, I fast, I legitimately fast-forwarded through both of them. It was like 10 minutes long at least. It was unnecessary. Unnecessary, completely unnecessary. Uh, Machine Gun, like, I don't even know who, Machine Gun Kelly, I think, played out John Cena. He's he's wearing a shirt that says Cleveland. They're in Miami, and he's talking about Massachusetts. I have no idea what's going on. Um, and Florida brings out The Rock. Uh, 
it's it's extremely unnecessary. It's extremely unnecessary. And right before the main event, it's not a good lead in. It's not a good lead in for your crowd. I understand they were trying to use it as a buffer. Put a match there. That's what people want to see. They want to see wrestling. Like Big Show Cody Rhodes was five minutes. You could have put that there. That would have been great. But um, yeah. So Rock and John Cena, another half hour match. Oh, WrestleMania matches, unless they are Iron Man matches, should not be over a half hour. Just by rule of thumb, I think. Um, yeah, they should, unless it's like an eight team elimination tag or something like that, like, should not be over a half hour because there's a lot, like, picture the worst parts you didn't like from Hogan and Rock and Hogan and Warrior. And that's kind of what this is. Um, the finishing spot is okay. Like, the finish is nice, but it's just. Lol Rock wins because of course The Rock was going to win because this is once in a lifetime. Right, you guys? Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. That's the third lie this WrestleMania is built on. Like, like, oh, guys, they put it on a cup. It's on a cup. Once you put something on a cup, that stays forever. This cup is a lie. This cup is a lie. Angry. Um, yeah. Because guess what match we're getting next WrestleMania? I know. I was there. It's not really that much better the second time around. Because The Rock, I and The Rock is in great condition, great shape. He's in bad conditioning. It's very obvious. I mean, I don't know. It just. I know. I think this match is kind of the reason Stone Cold Steve Austin doesn't come back to wrestle. Because I've heard Austin say that he, if he can't be full Stone Cold Steve Austin, he would never want to come back. This is kind of the point of that, and it's a shame. But uh, The Rock beat Cena, obviously, and uh, yeah. So um, next WrestleMania, we're going to New York. Not New York. We're going to New York. Not New York. They're going to New Jersey. They're going to New Jersey. They're going to tell you it's New York. They're going to tell you it's New York a whole lot because we're in the New York Giants arena. They play in Jersey. We're in the New York Jets arena. They play in Jersey. Um, the only thing New York about next year's Hall um, WrestleMania is the Hall of Fame because that actually was in New York. Access when you were in New York. But anyway, we'll talk about that more when... Um, we go into WrestleMania 29, which I was at. So uh should be interesting for me to have some recall about this. But, uh, yeah. So if you have any questions about WrestleMania 28, if you think I'm a complete moron for not digging Taker Triple H 3 um, a second time around, let me know. Hit me up at Mad Mike 483 on the Twitter machine. Hit me up hit me up on the comments on the YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, at Mayhem Show. Hit the hashtag MM. And uh, we will see you in New Jersey. For WrestleMania 29, this has been 32 Manias with Mike.